everyone and welcome back to All About Steph 1 with me, Steph, and today it is finally predictions time. I have ridden the wave of all the content creators who were doing them in January and February, and now it's March. We are a week and a half before the season starts. Let's go. Before we get into this video, I want to make it a little bit interactive for you guys, so I'm going to give you two truths and a lie about my predictions that are upcoming in this video, and you guys are going to have to identify which one the lie is, and I will do two sets, so one set of truths and lies for the Drivers' Championship and one set of truths and lies for the Constructors' Championship. So your statements for the Drivers' Championships are as follows. Number one, Sergio Perez beats Valtteri Bottas in the Drivers' Championship standings. Number two, Lance Stroll beats Sebastian Vettel in the Drivers' Championship standings. And number three, Fernando Alonso is best of the rest. Your statements for the Constructors' Championship are as follows. Number one, Mercedes wins the Constructors. Number two, Williams comes last in the Constructors. Number three, Ferrari beats Aston Martin in the Constructors. There you have it, those are your sneak peeks of what's to come in the video. Don't forget to comment down below which one you think was the lie and if you were right or not. But let's just get into it and let's talk about the Drivers' Championship standings first. And in last place, I'm going to have Nicholas Latifi. Now, I think Nicky really improved over the course of the 2020 season. I think his race pace is really, really good. And at times it was much better than George's but I still think that he's going to miss out due to the machinery and the drivers around him. In 19th, I have Nikita Mazepin. He is a very, very aggressive driver, and I do think it could land him in a little bit of trouble as we go through the 2021 season. So yeah, I think he's going to have quite a few DNFs after contact and collisions with other drivers, but I do think that aggressive driving could also snatch him a couple of points maybe in a couple of races, but I also would not be surprised to see him with no points on the board. In 18th, we have everyone's favourite Mercedes replacement. We have George Russell. Again, he's going to be right at the bottom because the Williams car is not going to be good. I'm holding out hope for them in 2022, but the car has not made massive strides to bridge the gap between the back markers in the midfield. So yeah, George is going to have to stay right down at the bottom. 17th is Mick Schumacher. I think maybe the trial sprint races that we're going to have this season could give Mick a couple of opportunities for some points. We know he's a great starter. I still don't think he's going to be great. The Haas, like the Williams, is still going to be right at the back. So yeah, these four are definitely going to be the last position four. In 16th is Antonio Giovinazzi. I still think he's going to be beaten by his teammate Kimi Raikkonen, who is in 15th. The Alpha, again, like the Haas and the Williams, is a backmarker team and will not have bridged the gap this year. So, yes, these six drivers will be the six bottom drivers. And unfortunately, I do think that Iceman Kimi Raikkonen will have the better of his teammate Antonio Giovinazzi again this year. And now we're getting into the juicy bit, because in P14, I have gone with Esteban Ocon, which might be doing him a disservice. And do you know what? I do think that Ocon is a good driver, but I just think the midfield around him this year is full of good drivers, if not great drivers. And I feel like Ocon could lose out to those around him who might be in better machinery as well. In 13th is Yuki Tsunoda. Over the weekend in testing, we saw that he was extremely quick and he adapted to that car almost instantly. So I'm so excited to see what he's going to do when he's warmed up in the Alpha Tauri. I think that he will outperform the car, just like I think his teammate Pierre Gasly will. And he'll be able to make it into several Q3s and be very often in the points. Not consistently like some of the other midfields, but there quite often. In 12th, we have Yuki's teammate Pierre Gasly, both driving for Alpha Tauri, which is not the strongest midfield car, so I feel like I can't put them any higher. Last year, as we know, Pierre Gasly did pick up a win, and that boosted him up the Drivers' Championship standings table, but unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen this year, so they won't be able to pick up enough points to be higher in comparison to the other midfield teams. In 11th, it's a tiny bit controversial. I've gone with Sebastian Vettel. Yes, I don't think he's going to be in the top half of the standings this year. I am losing a little bit of faith in Seb. I'm really excited and I hope that he has got his mojo back and he will be doing good things in that Aston Martin. I do believe we'll see flashes of 
brilliance from him, but I don't think that he will consistently be up there with the rest of the drivers, who I think are exceptionally quick and experienced and successful in the midfield. Moving on to the top half of the table, I have gone with Carlos Sainz in 10th position. I do think that Carlos Sainz is a fantastic driver and I do think that it was a good smart decision kind of for Ferrari to bring him on because he's fresh and he will be picking up those points this year that Seb missed out on last year. But I do think he will be plagued with a few reliability issues, he will have a few collisions, especially collisions with his teammate which I have already predicted to happen. And so I feel like he's going to lose out on quite a big haul of points, even though I do believe Carlos Sainz is one of the handiest drivers in the midfield. He is so nifty. In ninth position, I've gone with Lando Norris. I finally think that Lando is going to have the better of Carlos, even though they are no longer teammates. But yes, I think that Lando will have a good season, a great season in that McLaren car. I don't think he's the best midfield driver that we've got on the grid, so I think there will be guys that are in front of him, but I do think that P9 is a very respectable place for me to put him, and I think that one is quite realistic. P8 on my list is Lance Stroll, and maybe I have overhyped him a little bit, but I think that he built a lot of momentum in the 2020 season and should hopefully be able to carry that over into 2021. I've always underrated Lance Stroll, but I think that this is going to be the year that he proves me wrong. He's going to really step into that team leader role at Aston Martin because he has now seniority over how long he's been at the team with newcomer Sebastian Vettel. So hopefully he'll come into his element and prove me right by putting him P8. Fingers crossed. Number seven is Fernando Alonso driving for Alpine. He is going to drive the absolute wheels off of that car. I think it's going to be a decent car, but... Even if it's not, he's going to do absolute bits with it and storm to at least a couple of podiums and maybe even a race victory, which I have also predicted to happen. In sixth, I've gone with Charles Leclerc. I think he's gonna do this year the exact same thing he did last year with the Ferrari and he's gonna place it where it doesn't belong, in positions where it shouldn't be in comparison to the rest of the midfield. Ferrari have a really strong lineup when it comes to these drivers who are going to extract the maximum performance that they can out of a car that isn't the best on the grid. And so I think Charles will be able to do that and that's why he's so high up on this list because I think he will even be able to sneak the odd podium. More so, I think he will be consistently in the points and even if it's fighting for P8, P9, P10, I do think that he will be picking up the little points every weekend, which will just add to his totals. P5 in best of the rest position is Daniel Ricciardo. I think the combination of him and McLaren is honestly going to work so well this year. He's a fabulous driver in the midfield and he's going to have the machinery underneath him, which he didn't necessarily have throughout his time at Renault. And so I think that he will really come into his own. I think that he will gel really well with the team and that hopefully the two of them will be able to make it all the way up to p5 in the drivers championship together okay we've made it to the last four positions in the drivers standings so they are obviously consisting of the mercedes boys and the red bull boys and i'm gonna do p3 and p4 together because i feel like they're related so in p4 i've gone with valtteri bottas and p3 sergio perez the most distinguishing factor for me is that Valtteri Bottas excels in qualifying and Sergio Perez excels in the race. And a reminder, the points do not come on a Saturday unless we're going to trial these sprint races. But points come on a Sunday and so I think Checo will have the better of Valtteri Bottas. Once he gets clued up in that Red Bull car, he will do great things and I do think that on several occasions he will pass Valtteri Bottas for maybe a position on the podium. I think that the racing that we're going to see in between those two second drivers is going to be exceptional and I'm really looking forward to it. In second place, no surprise really, is Max Verstappen. I don't think this is the year for him to take the championship off of Hamilton, but I do think that he will be much closer than he has in previous years. He will easily beat P3 and P4 this year, and he will be Hamilton's closest title contender. However, in P1, I have gone with the almighty Lewis Hamilton, who I do believe is going to storm to his eighth world championship this year. 
I have no reason to doubt that this will be the case. I think Hamilton has displayed very clearly that he is still in the prime of his Formula One career. He is still on his way to more championships and his consistency, his drive and his motivation are all factors that are going to take him straight to that title. I don't think it will be as straightforward as maybe 2020 or 2019 because I do think that Max will prove to be a bit of a niggly challenge for him. But I still think that by maybe Brazil, Australia, that he will have wrapped up that championship title. So there you have it. Those are my driver's championship predictions. Some may be controversial, some not so much but let me know if you agree down in the comments below. If you couldn't already tell, the lie was that Fernando Alonso was gonna be best of the rest and the other two statements were true in my predictions. Did you guess correctly? Let me know in the comments. But let's just run down what I think the order of the Constructors Championship will be as well. In last position, I have gone with Williams. Unfortunately, the car is still not competitive. It has not bridged the gap. So the only way they'll be picking up points is in a crazy race. And there are a lot of other midfield drivers in front of them who will likely be able to pick up the points ahead of them. So if Williams picks up a point, I will be really, really happy for them. But I'm going to put them at the bottom of the standings because I think it's highly unlikely. In ninth position is Haas. It could be very well that they also finish the season on no points, but I am predicting maybe a couple to come from Mick. The Haas guys have made no secret of the fact that they are turning their attentions as well to 2022 rather than trying to develop a 2021 car, which isn't going to massively change where they finish in the standings. So it's probably safe to say that Haas is going to be in either 9th or 10th. But in this prediction video, I'm going with 9th. In eighth, I've gone with Alfa Romeo. Again, it's one of the three backmarker teams, so we can't expect it to be any higher. This is the strongest of the backmarker teams, so I have no doubt that they will finish in P8. In seventh is Alfa Tauri. Unfortunately, I don't think the machinery is as good as those of the midfield cars in front of them, so I think they will be stuck in P7, even though the drivers will outdrive the car. In sixth is going to be Alpine. Even though I think Fernando Alonso is going to do so well, I feel like he's going to be let down by his teammate in Esteban Ocon. I do feel a little bit guilty for putting Ocon so low down, but I do think that Alpine doesn't have the best car and doesn't have the best midfield lineup and they are therefore going to suffer in comparison to the other midfield teams. In fifth, I have gone with Aston Martin. I have made no secret of the fact that I don't think Aston Martin is going to be as competitive as it was last year. I think Sergio Perez leaving the team, or not having a choice really, being forced out of the team, is going to be a massive factor in why they fall back this year. And maybe I'm going to be completely wrong, but I just think the teams ahead of them are going to have the edge on them. In P4, I have Ferrari. I think the combination of Leclerc and Sainz is probably the strongest midfield lineup that we actually have. Those two are both very capable of outperforming the car that they are driving. So I have no doubt that that Ferrari probably does not belong in P4, but the drivers are going to make the difference and will be able to boost it up in the constructors standings. In P3, I have gone with McLaren. I do think that they have a strong lineup, perhaps not as strong as the Ferrari lineup, but it's still strong nonetheless. I am confident that they will be able to switch that Mercedes power unit on and do some really great things with that car. And even though the midfield is going to be really tight, I do think that McLaren will edge out all of the other teams. Finally, the big two. And in second place, I am going with Mercedes. I think that Red Bull is going to edge them this year. It seems crazy that Mercedes won't continue its dominant streak, but I think that this year they will realize they made a mistake in not promoting George Russell a little bit earlier because I feel like the second driver of Valtteri Bottas is not going to be up to standards with the second driver of Red Bull. And that is why I have put Red Bull in first. The combination of Checo and Max is really, really strong. And I feel like this is the lineup that is going to take Red Bull back to the top. Throughout testing, the Red Bull was looking really strong and planted as a car and we didn't have any of that rear instability that we had last year. So I think if Red Bull are coming out with a good package from the beginning of the year, then they have a real chance of taking that fight to Mercedes and winning that fight. 
I will say, I have not thought about the fact that Mercedes could promote George to replace Valtteri Bottas. I mean, I have thought about it, but I haven't conceptualized that in my in my predictions. So that could definitely happen and that could shake things up a little bit in terms of the Drivers' Championship and the Constructors' Championship. However, I'm not thinking about that right now because it's all rumours. So yeah, if you couldn't tell which one the lie was, the lie was that Mercedes is going to win. And the other two statements were true in my predictions. But yeah, that is my predictions video done and dusted. On Sunday of this week, I'm going to be releasing my fantasy teams because they're kind of related to predictions. So I guess you could say it's like a part two. So come and join the premiere for that. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave it a like. And subscribe down below if you've not already and turn on that post notification bell so you never miss content from me. But thank you all so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.